Welcome back into Hoosier Sports Night. IU Volleyball is starting to receive a couple of votes in the NCAA coaches poll after a thrilling five-set victory against Purdue and West Lafayette on Wednesday. Now on Sunday, they came home to University Gym to attempt to keep the momentum going against the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Cody Sherritt was there to catch all the volleyball crazy action. Coming off an outstanding five-set victory against their bitter rivals Wednesday in West Lafayette, the Hoosiers didn't have much time to celebrate as they had number eight nationally ranked Minnesota coming into the University Gym on Sunday. Junior blocker Ashley Benson had nine kills, four blocks, and an ace. Sophomore libero Caitlin Cox tallied 20 digs on the day, recording 12 in the third set alone. Jordan Haverly had another stellar game with 12 kills, good enough to name her Big Ten Freshman of the Week for the second time this year. Unfortunately, these efforts were not enough as the Hoosiers fell to the Golden Gophers in three sets. I think that you're watching that match and I think as a normal spectator you'd say, oh, we didn't play that bad. You know, we didn't play great, but we didn't play that bad. But the problem is, is, is just playing okay against a top 10 opponent is, is really not going to allow you to beat that top 10 opponent. So I think we have to continue to improve. We have a young team, so we're learning every time we step on the court. It's the first time we've played someone of that caliber. Um, but I was very proud of, of our blocking schemes, of how we understood at least what they were doing on that side. I thought we passed really well and were in system and able to run our offense. But I think it's the big plays that they make, the defensive digs, you know, and the transition out of it that we have to get better at. We need to play like we did against Purdue, have that fight and fire that we did. Um, that's the only way that we'll be able to, to even compete with them. Today's loss drops the Hoosiers to 2-2 two two in Big Ten play as they head into Illinois and Northwestern next weekend. From University Gym, I'm Cody Sherritt, Hoosier Sports Night. From Europe to Bloomington, Hoosiers women's tennis coach Lynn Loring has made a global mark when it comes to recruiting. Mary Deneen caught up with junior Miriam Sopel and Charlotte Martin to see how life at IU is different from their lives across the pond. IU athletes come from around the world to compete for the Hoosiers. But what's it like to come from overseas and adjust to the lifestyle at IU? We talked with Charlotte Martin from England and Marion Sopel from France, who are part of the women's tennis team, to find out. We have a university at home, so we don't have like college tennis back at home, which is one of the reasons I decided to come over here. Did the um, coaches come over to England to see you or did you send tapes? Uh, basically we just um, spoke on the phone and by email and then I sent over a video. Tennis being one of the few things that felt similar to Charlotte coming to IU, she experienced many cultural differences. Our universities are generally quite a lot smaller than this um, and obviously like you know we don't have like the massive football stadiums or the basketball arenas and stuff so um, you know seeing all that was a pretty big deal when I first got here. So now that Charlotte has adjusted to life in Indiana I'm sure there are things she misses in England. Just the culture in general I miss the music, uh, TV shows, um, I miss the rain a little bit. <laughs> um, I know lots of things really like proper football, not American football. Marion Sopel of France is another player on the tennis team. Like Charlotte, her country didn't have the opportunity for her to be a student athlete. We spoke with her on the differences she faced coming from France. I didn't expect like everyone, for example, like that's funny, everyone wearing a IU t-shirt and representing the school even though you're not a student athlete. I think it's really good to bring like the spirit to the, spirit to the school. There was also that big language barrier that Marion faced her freshman year. I was uh, rooming with a British person my freshman year, so um, that was really different because I, in school in France I learned uh, British English, so we had like all these inside jokes and when we came on like American like settings, we would be like inside jokes together. And I miss my country, but I love being here as well. <laughs> the IU women's tennis team is full of international girls. Six out of the eight come from outside of the U.S. Two are from Russia, there's two from France, one from Portugal, and one from England. Both Charlotte and Marion have really enjoyed their college experience in the U.S. The tennis team has really brought them a sense of belonging to IU. For Hoosier Sports Night, I'm Mary Deneen. Let's talk a little IU men's tennis as they began playing in the All-American Tournament in Tulsa, Oklahoma this past weekend. And unfortunately for the Hoosiers, Maxime Armanquad and Alexander Van Gills both fell in the pre-qualifying rounds. Jeremy Langer and Lachlan Ferguson both lost in the qualifying rounds, which knocked the Hoosiers out of the singles tournament. However, doubles action continues throughout the week for the Hoosiers. 
Indiana men's cross country came out victorious over the weekend at Paul Short Run. Four Hoosiers finished in the top 10 and they were led by redshirt freshman Andy Bayer, who finished in third place with a final time of 23 minutes and 42 seconds. The women's team took third in the race, placing three runners in the top 20. The team ran behind Wendy Robinson, who topped the Hoosiers leaderboard with a time of 20 minutes and four seconds. That time put her in fourth place overall. The North End Zone at Memorial Stadium looks a little bit different this season. Gorgeous. The 138,000 square foot facility was completed shortly before the 2009 football season began. The project was officially dedicated before the Ohio State Indiana game over the past weekend. Ronan O'Shea has more on the dedication of the North End Zone, a project over two years in the making. The morning that construction crews were to break ground on what would become the North End Zone here at Memorial Stadium, Indiana University officials got word that beloved football coach Kerry Hepner had lost his battle with cancer and had passed away. Many within the university felt that the ceremony should not go on, but it was Hepner's wife, Jane, who insisted that it's exactly what Terry would have wanted. More than two and a half years later, in the official opening ceremony of the North End Zone, it was Coach Kerry Hepner's legacy which remained strong. From that first moment, his spirit has infused this remarkable project. These new facilities reflect Coach Hep's vision for the IU football program and for all of IU athletics and reinforce his commitment to academic and athletic excellence. His spirit, his enthusiasm, uh, his don't quit attitude is certainly uh, has permeated the entire campus but within our football program and can't thank him enough. It's one of those things that you just have to see to really believe, don't you think? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's stunning, but um, it somehow makes having him not here all the more glaring. But, it, you know, it doesn't take a, that doesn't take away from what an achievement this is. Uh, it's, it's tremendous. I mean, to, to, to have him visualize this and now we're standing in it, I mean, that's quite an honor. And the guys that he recruited, uh, they get to see this materialize and get to, to use it. And so it's just been a, a great, uh, just, just a really, a truly blessing. And as much as Coach Hefner wanted the North End Zone to be complete here at Indiana University, he also stressed the importance of a full house. Well, Saturday night's Indiana-Ohio State game had by far the largest crowd of the year with more than 50,000 people in attendance. Yesterday, Indiana women's golf began play in the Johnny Imes Invitational. The Hoosiers finished the day shortened by darkness in a tie for third place with a score of 12 over par. Laura Nocta led the Hoosiers early in the tournament with a score of 4 over par and sits in 11th place overall. Dustin Kaufman is the newest addition to the Indiana baseball team. Kaufman, a now volunteer assistant coach for the Hoosiers, was once a student manager for the team. Before being named assistant coach, Kaufman served as the team's first base coach and as assistant strength coach. All right, Kate, Hoosiers are going to Virginia this week in a little Big Ten ACC challenge. You think they have what it takes to go to 4-2 and two this year? I don't know. I hope Ben Chapel can look a little bit more like that Brett Favre we were talking about earlier. That would be nice. That would be very nice. For Ben Heisler, I'm Kate Senny. See you next week for Hoosier Sports Night. Peace.